Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the EcoStructure Machine Expert HVAC. I'm your host, Leandro Mada, and in this video, what we're gonna see are the persistent variables that we have in the controller, but we call EE perm variables. So let's go to the presentation. So in the previous video, we saw that we have the status variables. Okay, let me just put this in the pen. Oops. So we have we saw in the previous video the status variables that basically we can define the values in there, but as soon as we assign a value and we power cycle the equipment, the variable is lost. Okay, unless we do another logic that store a different value, but that's another topic. So the status variables just lost the value, okay, and start from the default the, from zero. Um, so in order to avoid that, if we want, for example, to save the a variable that has the configuration of our machine, then we just need to use the EE prom parameters. So the access is the same as we saw before for the BIOS and the status variables. Here, the EE prom is under Modbus options. So if we continue with this, we can see that we have a similar view as we have from the previous one for the status values from here the EPRON most of the same again from the modicon m171 optimized we have this additional column which is for display level as i mentioned before the m171 optimized has the possibility to have an embedded display the seven segment display so we need to put um, some characters here in order to visualize the variable and then access to the value of that variable okay uh, something new that we have is this installer access level that i'm going to create a different video because i believe it deserves um, a different explanation it's going to take some time so um, it's the same basically but we have a different area of memory for this now again as we saw for the um, status value for how to create a variable or how to remove it and how to make the recalculation we also had the add multiple as i showed you before in the previous video so if we go to the here i'm just going to do this part and go for configuration yes so this is for the uh, status. I'm going to delete this part. Good. Now select EPRON. Now, here the EPRON has almost a similar view to the other one. It's just the definition is different. Okay, because the status is just for showing data and the other one's for retaining the data. Let's bear with a second. Okay, so how to add uh, EPROM variable. So here we have the possibility to add a new variable, define. I usually start with the name. We're going to see this later as I show you for. If it's configuration, I always use CFC and then the part motor ACC something. Then if you want to add multiples, we have this option. We just need to define a prefix CFC. Um, and then you have, for example, drive, and then you have the per suffix um, chiller. So, uh, do, 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 do. No, let's add like this. And here in the bottom, you can see the output example, how it's going to look like. You can define the how many do you want. So I'm going to add five. And the step by one or you can make the step by two you can see this difference so i'm going to step by one okay here you can define the step and also here the address so i'm going to start for this one okay and you can see it add five variables all together simple and if i want to delete this just remove now we have the option to press this recalc that basically it organized the data to be one next to the other one in case you want to read outside the data from the controller it's much easier in that way 
So instead of using this, I'm going to start for uh, 5 by 2. And then you just select the values that you want using the shift. Select one and then shift to the one that you want. Recalc. And it will tell you, do you want to start everything from this position? Yes. And there we go. One next to the other. The same as we saw on the status bar. Now, let's go to the presentation so I don't jump into another things and spoil the thumb. Okay, so here it's the same as as we saw previously. Um, maybe you don't see it. I just for myself. There we go. So we have um, different ranges from or different areas of memories. Okay, we already saw from the status it has a specific area, and then from the epon it has a different area. So how do we know? how much memory do we have or how many addresses we can have so it's very simple we just or you should check on the manual but um, probably i don't have too much memory on this so i usually create a variable this one is the m171 select this and here i just type whatever i want whatever number i want and then i get the massive server okay so you can see here the range of variables that you can use on this controller okay it goes 16,384 to 16,895 for the 171 optimize and then if you go to the em172 you should be able to see that i have plenty more uh, da, 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 da. there we go 16,384 to 20,479 Okay, you can see I have much more space available on this one. So, now, we have already seen this part. Perfect, fantastic. Now, uh, here. This is what I meant about the, how we name the names. Okay, um, the variables, the symbol for the variables. Just a name they use. If you're using boolean, I saw everything with x. If it's int, for example, with the i, double int, di, or w, real, r. For me, it's useful when I'm trying to read the code, so I um, I know that I need to link the same variables together. Okay, just for that reason. So, these are the difference configuration that we may have it's very easy this part read only i think i use from the status i didn't change the presentation my bad but um here if we take a look you always need to access to this part from outside you you cannot disable it unless you use this installer access level that i'm going to show you later so basically if you don't know the address there's nothing you can change but you can read it but that's another topic so you have minimum max you can link all the variables over there to set the max and min it's one thing to do you can have the scaling the format and the unit and the format that this part is going to be helpful when we work on the web server that we can or the web pages that we can create for this PLC for the M172. Um, let's see what do we have now. Uh, do, do, do. Ah, something important here. You can link a variable or you can use a fixed value. So if I don't want to use another variable, just put a fixed value there. It's totally fine. And this uh, installed access level, which is new in the version 1.5, in the previous version, you don't have it. That I'm going to create a specific video for this because I believe it deserves. So as soon as we create all the values that we want, we just need to compile this. So as soon we as soon as we compile, we should be able to see on the project a new folder called configuration variables. Probably my project already have it because I was working with the status variables. But the important thing is that you will see a new folder called EE prom parameters. So if we go back here, programming, you see the configuration value, the status variable. Now, if I 
combine this part I should be able to see this phi icfc drive one two three four five underscore acc on the other side okay programming EEPROM and everything here so I should be able to use this over here now one important thing here is that the EEPROM variables are only for the code only for reading the value so it means that I cannot assign a new value so if I try to use something like this I should receive an error okay let me just delete this all test compile okay so there we go you have uh, here invalid access so you cannot do it in this way what you need to do that I'm going to show you is that you will need to use um, a different function blocks that are located over here uh, tag the blocks this ones over here in the new version of the software we got library and we got target target blocks Okay, in the previous part you have blocks and operations something similar i don't remember but here in target blocks you have all these functions that allow you to write to the value which is here sys write bar and then you just need to define the variable that we're going to use so depending on the variable that you're going to use to write information you need to use something like this okay so sys write bar so i should be able to use like this sys write bar int adr okay the variable that i want to write from uh, to and the new value this is how it should work and then here you can assign a variable but just to show you quickly so in this way you don't get the error that you cannot uh, make it work so here you can see that function returning error because i haven't assigned this uh this one i believe is uh boolean so if i use this no name and put it over here i should receive the error or oh, that specific error okay that this one is for something else don't worry about it but this is how you can use the coding text the structure text okay i'm going to show you later in the how to do it in function blocks uh, to have a different way to see information okay so this this is it this part so that is the thing that you need to know that you cannot it by cold you cannot modify the value okay uh, this this is what i meant the same as the other way you just drag and drop the variables into your code simple as that and if you want to output this invalid access to the variable the message error that i showed you before so if you want to be online with the controller you want to do this you want to change the variable as i show you with the system variables okay uh, you get this message but you can change the value using the commission in tab okay and the other way if you want to use code you just need to use these functions okay so um how to use those functions well it's simple from the operator tension from the operators and blocks we just need to go to miscellaneous to get the adr which should be the address for the value of the eprom and then from the target target blocks we just need to go to the sys right bar and select with the variable type that we want okay drag and drop it and then just add here's the eprom variable and here the new value that you want it can be another variable or a fixed value it's up to you and then the output you have the boolean bool output okay so uh, compile create a few variables so let's try to make this so i have already yes I'm going to connect to the controller 
yes i'm going to connect to this one i'm going to download all so you can see the complete things so here in this case i didn't assign a default value but uh, once you compile everything you can define a default value so in the next download you can have your own settings for the controller I'm loading, just wait for it. Now I don't want to download the default values because I don't want. Yes, reboot now. So now that you have that, you should be able, or I should be able to connect to the controller and make the modifications. Before doing that, what I'm going to do is to create here a menu, add menu machine config here i'm going to add the variables so i can easily access to that this is useful for you so this information now that i have it here yes yes Save this, download. Okay, now. So you can have all the parameters over here, but it's going to be not so good to find all the information. You can have it, but it's going to be all mess over there. So if you configure the menu, you should be able to see on your application your variables. And here, you can read the actual value and then make the modification. So in the programming part, what I'm going to do is to add the watch. I'm going to delete this part and add this five value. One, two, three, four, and five. Here, it doesn't allow me to modify this because they are, this one are EEPROM, but from the commissioning, I'm able to do that. So new value is going to be number five, this one 15, and this one 20. I'm going to select all these, write the new values, programming. You can see the new values over there. So now what I'm going to do is to power cycle the equipment. Okay. Trust me that I disconnect from the controller and power cycle it. Now I'm going to keep power again and wait for it to recover to boots up again <laughs> okay there we go and if we connect yes yes i should be able to see the data again so the data is in the controller that's why these epron are the one that you need to use for configuration of the machine so the information is not lost so uh, we have already this, seen this part. What we can do is to show you that I can access to this information remotely. So here, six, five, 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 three. Connect. You can see the values over here. I'm going to modify this to uh, 45. Update. You can see there is modified over here, but here I just need to read again. And there we go. So this is how we can use the EEPROM variables. I believe I try to quickly show you all of them. So remember that you cannot write the EEPROM via code. You just need to use the syswrite bar uh, functions that I show you. Uh, it's very simple. Just remember how to do it if you're going to do it via uh, function block in this way okay it's very easy to remember where the information is located um, and if you want you can use the commissioning tab in order to access to the data it's much better for you to use menus so you can easily access the data in one specific place so thank you very much for watching this video and i see you on the next one